world, what is up? Yes. I'll wait. I'll wait. Oh, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we're here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our guests are excited. Our, our fans are excited, as they should be, because our guests today are an absolute force of nature in and out of the ring. Now, as you all know, with wedding planning, a new baby, hours upon hours of physical training, heartbreak, historic matches, this past year has been a wild ride. And this Sunday, May 20th, once again, they will pull the curtain back and share every moment in a brand new season of their hit show, Total Bellas on E. That's right, here to tell us all about it. If you can believe it, folks, the Bella Twins themselves, Nikki and Brie Bella are here. How about that? Come on now. Come on now. Oh, can't wait. Ah, uh, always, always fun and always a treat to have them on the show, so you are right to applaud as such, my friends. We're going to bring them out in just a second, uh, but we've got a quick trailer that we're going to take a look at for the season, so uh, let's go ahead and run that clip. I feel like 2018 is the year of change. I just want to go back in there like I didn't skip a beat. Are you sure you're ready for the rumble? Don't be afraid. Keep moving forward. It's Brian's time to try to make a comeback. This guy's never getting married. For God's sakes, be honest with me. I feel like I'm living in a fake life. I even told you so many times that this would happen. I just started to feel so suffocated. I'm not sure we should go through with this. So we really want to call this off? I might be the only girl in the rumble breastfeeding. Sometimes I wish I wasn't even getting married. Now this is a bachelorette party. You're flexible. No, no. The first ever 30 woman Falling out of love with me. I just want to be a mom. The season premiere of Total Bellas, Sunday, May 20th at 9, only on E. Ladies and gentlemen, make a ridiculous amount of noise. Nikki Bella and Brie Bella are right here. <laughs> Aw, thank you. Doing the wave. Doing the wave. I like oh. it. <laughs> hi, yes. How cute. Aw, hi, guys. That was amazing. Watch this. One more time. Come on. Come on. Wave. Wow. <laughs> that makes us feel really good. <laughs> uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Welcome back to the show. It is always uh, such a treat, and we always look forward to having you come on and be here and hang out with us. Um, and your fans, everywhere, you, even in the pouring rain, the fans come out in droves for you guys. Uh, it's got to be a great feeling. That's got to be very exciting. Uh, how are you doing? How, how, how is everybody doing? How, how's life right now? How's New York? How's, how's times? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, we got to say what up to the Bella Army. Thank yes. you all for coming we out. We love you guys. We love you guys. Oh. Rain or shine. I mean, we're loving New York. New York is always just so amazing. It's yeah, we went to the Downton Abbey exhibit. Oh, we're yeah. Huge fans of Downton Abbey. Huge fans. Oh, you must, mm -hmm. That must have been amazing. Yeah. Um, very amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Lady Mary's fashion, we love. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Birdie's here with me this week, so it's been kind of, I know. Hey, you going to applaud for Birdie, of course? Yeah. <laughs> it's been fun to kind of take her around and, you know, just show her Central Park, and yeah. it's it's really nice. It's I mean, one, just over a year, about a year, where are we on Birdie? She turned one she May turned 9th. One. Yeah, she just turned one. Wow. She, uh, honestly, it's crazy. She turned one and all of a sudden has all this attitude and sass, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Don't take after your Auntie Coco. That's right. She's <laughs> learning from the best. <laughs> Perfect time to bring her to New York, just to sort of absorb all that New York success as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> Took her to Bergdorf. It was perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Let me ask you something. We talk about the, the Bella Army, the fans, and how rain or shine, here we are. Is there, as you travel the, the country, the world, is there a palpable difference? Can you feel like, oh, those are New York fans versus those are like uh, Toronto fans? Like, do you know, can you tell a different vibe? Or? Not when it comes to the Bella Army. Like, Bella Army strong. So they're all, like, we're just all our own type of people, us Bellas. And that's Bella's, I refer even to the Bella Army. But, um, I mean, definitely, you know, of course, when we go overseas and they rarely see us, especially places that will go to some countries, we'll only go there every so many years. Right. It's this incredible energy of like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm seeing you in person, which is always so crazy. I feel like I'm the same. I'm screaming, too, when I like get off the bus. Like, ah, I can't believe I'm here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and it's crazy, too, because of Instagram. You know, we see everyone's feeds and, you know, when they're tagging Nicole and I. So there's times, like, I'll see you guys on the streets. And I'm like, hey, oh, shit, I, I mean, I just saw you on Instagram. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I do that, too, to people. It's, like, funny. They're like, oh, my gosh, you recognize me? I'm like, yeah, I see you on my Instagram all the time. <laughs> it's pretty amazing to be out there recognizing fans and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. Seeing your own, like, version of Internet celebrities. Of like, oh, I know this yeah, person. Totally, yeah, totally, yeah. Pretty amazing. Um, all right, well, they're here. We're all here. We're all excited uh, for season three. Uh, big season. Congratulations on another fantastic season of this show. Uh, here's the question. You guys have always, historically, very comfortable, open book. That's how it's always been. Uh, do you, when you, with a show like this, do you get a little nervous right before the premiere to open that book once again? What are the feelings going into a premiere? Oh, my gosh. Well, definitely this season, 100%, because <laughs> the man to my left... Um, but, uh, I mean, this season will definitely be the hardest for me to relive. But um, I'm also really excited for it to premiere this Sunday because, I mean, look, we all know what's going on with John and I. There's no secret there. It's, you know, all over the media. It's turned into this huge frenzy. And I think there's a lot of whys and whats. And I think this season of Total Bellas, people are really going to see why John and I right now are where we're at. Um, I think the one thing that's the most hurtful is people think that we do this just for ratings for our show. Um, the one thing that I absolutely love about Total Bellas is, is we are open book and our show is just so real and raw and so relatable. And I think with this season, it's the most relatable yet because I think a lot of women and even men have been in my position of um, you're in the wedding planning process and you have a lot of issues that come up and you have to deal with them head on and... You know, sometimes it brings a big down or it can bring a big up. And right now I'm in a down and I'm hopeful for my future. But I think there's going to be so many people that tune in and they're like, wow, I'm this gave me strength. It gave me bravery. It gave me courage. And so this season's very, very powerful. For sure. I, I think specifically with the wedding planning process, people that if they haven't been through it, it's easy to underestimate exactly what a toll that takes on an individual, on a relationship. Yeah. It's a lot bigger than anybody realizes. Oh my gosh, 100%. I was always just focused on the dress and like the tasting and the venue. And it is so much more. I mean, you truly have to think about forever. And what do you want? And what am I going to regret? Or what is he going to yeah. regret? And I never thought I would think about those things. I think wedding plan is like the best form of couples therapy ever. <laughs> and I had no idea. I guess it was good. You know, I mean, I waited six years for it. So maybe you should have waited longer. Brian and I got in a lot of fights over what cake we should have. He wanted chocolate. I wanted I mean, vanilla. Yeah. I was like, agave. Why not work? It's true, though. You'd be surprised. There's really big things, and even little things like that can become a point of like great contention. Of like, no, that is not the cake I want to be having that day. Like that can be a thing. Okay. Let me let me ask you this. Uh, you know, going into it, having been on the show for three years, having the cameras around, even being open books, how has having that crew, having that sur surround you for, for the period of time that it does, how does that impact how you navigate these difficult times? I mean, obviously, this is your life. You're going through all the things that you experience as a human being, and now uh, you have to somehow shut out that just behind you, four feet to the left, is someone documenting everything who will then pour over it in an editing suite. Like, I think it's knowing your purpose. Yeah. Um, I knew getting into reality TV five years ago that... I would be judged, I would be loved, I would be hated. And I think when you go into it like that, you can overcome when it's a hard moment. And I look at my purpose is um, before, you know, the day I leave this earth, if I can help at least just one person help change their life for the better, then I feel like I win. And I feel like my reality show gives me, or our reality show gives, um, I'm here. <laughs> gives me the, yeah, sorry, Brie, gives me the vehicle for that. I think I learned a lot, Total Bell is season one, when we saw Brian just get, you know, have this breakdown and become so depressed. Um, I can't believe how many people reached out to him and how many people Brian helped. And it was so hard for Brian to relive that, but he saw the benefit after the show aired of how many people he could help. And so I see that as the same. As long as I know that my purpose is positive and I could give back, then I feel okay when it's these down times. Yeah, and it's crazy because the crews become our family. Like, from the start of Total Divas, it's the same crew. So it's been five years of filming reality television. And when Nicole and John have gone through a lot of their stuff on TV, it's crazy because you'll look over and you literally see tears coming down the cameraman's eyes. And you see the sound guy having to leave the room because it's upsetting. 
and it's weird. You become like this big family. So you just feel like when you're in these moments and it's like the crew's in the moment too. And it just feels like all this big family in there together. It's it's interesting how we've become with our crew. And because of that, that's why they get a lot of Brie mode moments. Um, I forget you know, where we there. get interpretive <laughs> dances and songs on the fly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys, are there any, uh, like, hard lines in the sand of, like, look, cameras are allowed everywhere except this one place? Like, is there is there a place? Yeah, is there? Um, yeah, we, we do, like, a lot of special events with our family, and there's just stuff that we like to still keep private. Like, um, usually the week before Christmas, we all go down to the little town we are all raised in in Brawley, California, and we do this thing that we call the Drummer Boy Dinner that my grandfather started for us grandkids. And the reality shows wanted to film it. And we're like, absolutely not. No the way. drummer boy dinner stays with the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Dangerous. literally, you can't, like, if you're dating someone, you have to be engaged till you oh, yeah. get invited to this dinner. Like, John and Brian have had many dinners down the street while we've all celebrated. No way. It's oh, so yeah. Cool. We're like, we will oh, deliver you a spaghetti plate. <laughs> But you can't have it with the family. Yep. They, so they have like a kids' table, but like three blocks away. Basically. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I really. It's love so that. true. It is so cool. So we like to keep some of those moments. Just still, we like to keep them private and intimate. You have to, right? Like you it, do. It's one thing to be an open book, but at the end of the day, you still need to save something for you and, yes. and, and for your for your life. Right. How has that been finding that line with Birdie with with your child? Like, you know, what kind of life? Do you, or what kind of world do you want Birdie to grow up in, you know? Yeah, you know, I don't, I allow Birdie to film a little bit. You know, I pick my days with her and how much I, you know, how many hours I allow the cameras to be around, even though I swear she's the star of Total Bell is the season. Uh, season four will be like, called Total Brian, Birdie. Yeah, Birdie. yeah she's, uh, Brian, we're out of a job. Our daughter start. is more well, over She'll than support enough. you. Yeah. Um, but you know, I do. And you know, there's times where when it's her bedtime routine and any of that, I always ask them, like, they have to leave my house by 5 PM because it's time for the house to become quiet and just be with the family. Um, so I do have rules cause I also want Birdie not to grow up thinking it's normal to have cameras always around. Um, I want her to know like, you know, quiet and just with the family is normal. So I definitely have rules with her. Um, but you know, everyone saw me in 22 hours of labor, so. <laughs> yeah, prayer. and I saw all 22 hours yes. of labor, and I saw all of Brie, and <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> so, you know, I was like, it's only fair to see her grow up, yeah. too. Well, and the one thing that I absolutely adore about my sister is she, like, Birdie has a set schedule with her bottles, with her nap time, and even if there's a cool event to film, Brie never sacrifices Birdie's nap or anything like that. She's always home with her napping. And so that's something that I've always really respected about my sister. You. You're welcome. That's the only nice thing, by the way, I'm going to say to you today. So. I'm going to hold on to that. Yeah, you are. Well, I may force another nice comment out of you because I want to ask you this. You know, you talk about how you were there for everything. You saw all 22 hours, and you guys always get each other's backs. Uh, you are a dynamic duo in every sense of the word. And I and I think a lot of millions of people over the world would agree. You're both like the very definition of a strong uh, human being inside and out. It's okay. it's amazing. Thank you. Um, so here is here is the question: Do you think you'd be able to do a show like this? And I know this is blasphemous, but if you weren't twins, heck, if you weren't even related, if you were uh, on your own, if you didn't have each other, do you think Think you'd be able to be an open book and and have this life with this show that's a really I mean, good question yeah i definitely think i could do it but i don't know if i would stay as strong for the last five years as i have you know it's amazing to be able to not only be in wwe with nicole and travel the world and be a tag team and always have that support but doing reality and helping keeping each other grounded and just like when one's having a bad day, for some reason the other one's having a really good day and like helps the other one get out of the yeah. funk. Yeah. And just when like, for example, what's been going on lately with Nicole, it's like she has me constantly around her to, you know, just be her rock. And so maybe I would definitely do it, but who knows if like yeah. I would survive. I know. I, I mean, I think I would do it, but what's fun about doing it with Brie is it doesn't feel like work. Nothing feels like work with her. I mean, even when we were like hostess, like at 15 at the seafood restaurant, like we just goof off so much. I, I swear our manager was like, oh my gosh, why did I hire twins? <laughs> yeah. But Anytime we've worked together, we've always made it fun. School was fun. And to do all of this, even compared to Total Divas, it's yeah. so much fun filming just with her. Like, 
we just goof off yeah. and then we try to figure out the world and then we have to Google all the time because yeah. I, I won't know something and I look at her and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google it. Not happening over <laughs> here. Well, and it's funny because the first time Brian and I filmed, I'll never forget, like we were living in this apartment in San Diego and the crew walked in and I was like, just so you guys know, my husband and I are not entertaining and you might have to help us. And they're like, what? Just do what you do. And we're like, well, we're sitting on the couch right now. <laughs> like, do we just do that? And like, you guys will be fine. And I was just like, Brian, we're doomed. Like, they're gonna be like, not this couple. <laughs> were you like, do I sit? Is this an interesting oh, way to? Oh, it's sit? so like, awkward like, in the beginning. I, I'm like, literally, they had to tell me like, Brie, you don't have to talk the whole time because I was like, so Brian, so, <laughs> um, so how's everything going? Da, da, da. And I like for hours was just like, oh my gosh, what else do I talk about? And they're like, you could. <laughs> Relax, and I'm like, oh, okay, I don't have to talk for like five minutes. It's just like the improv thought, game from hell, just yes, yes, and everything. That's All what right, it really right. is. Yeah, yes. And I'm then like, maybe I should like cut. Quiet for a second, and then you're like looking in the camera, and you're like, don't look in the camera. And then you're like looking at the crew, and you're like, oh my gosh, can I use the restroom? Like, it, it can get so, it was so awkward. I mean, now it's not. Yeah, now but it's in weird. the beginning, it was so weird. Now, now it's just, it's there, and you, you've learned. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah it's yeah. become life. Be yourself for real. <laughs> Um, you know, as much fun as you talk about having uh, on the show and making the show, what what are some of the really fun things that you guys are excited for people to see uh, this season? I mean, of course, we've got the road to the Rumble, which is going to be uh, yeah. uh, it's going to be amazing to see. Honestly, so I'm, I'm excited to see that. Tell us a little bit about what, what you're excited about about that, the whole thing. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what I'm so excited for people to see on my end. You know, it's actually crazy because this season, both Brian and I make a comeback to the ring, yeah. which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, and you know, when I got the phone call call when they asked me to be in the Royal Rumble I was like blown because at the time Birdie was seven months old and I was like oh my gosh me like yes because I honestly was like of course they'll call Nikki but I really didn't think I'd get the phone call and um I just like looked at Brian and I'm like we have to start training now because mama body like we need <laughs> in ring shape is just not like any other thing so you get to see my journey to the Royal Rumble. You see Brian and I in the ring a lot. You'll see Nicole and I get in the ring and just um, starting to get back in that shape. But you do see where it's hard on me a bit because, you know, Brie Bella before Birdie is just so different. And I have to kind of like come to terms with my new body and my new look and just how I am. And so it's, that was a little difficult for me. It's like, do I go, like, am I really going from Brie mode to mama mode? Um, but I figure it out, and you get to see all the backstage stuff. Like, you'll see, like, Trish and Lita, and these people that Nicole and I are like, wait a second. Like, we get to be in the ring with Trish and Lita and with Asuka. Like, yeah. this is unreal. It was amazing. And to be part of a historical night like that, it's just such an honor. And so... Um, it's just, ugh, we just love it. Yeah, well, it's always fun showcasing the wrestling side of things on our shows because no other reality show except for Total Divas is doing that. And so um, that's what I love so much about Total Divas and Total Bellas is we give you that inside look of women's wrestling. And women's wrestling all over the world is just, you know, it's really made such an impact. Um, and this season, you do get to see me wedding planning. I know, like, all the rumors are about Mexico. I was not getting married in Mexico. No. I get it was on Cinco de Mayo, but it was not in Mexico. Um, but So you do get to see, you know, what I was going to have and maybe something that I will have in the future. And my dress, you guys, my dress. Oh, Even fuck. my dress. Yeah. My dress you was paid amazing. for it? You did? I was like, um, I'm not paying that much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was like, here you go. Here's my card. Thanks, Brie. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're gonna uh, we, we're gonna turn it over to the audience in a little bit because uh, we've got a ton of fans here, and I want to make sure we leave some time for everybody to get a good question in. Uh, but to that end, you know, we've got some young fans doing uh, the wave when you guys came out and whatnot. Yeah, you me. you two are very much. Uh, you don't just have fans like to them. You're superheroes. You're living superheroes. You're role models. And I wonder, with the millions of followers and all that stuff, if you ever feel like the weight of that responsibility uh, in daily life or in decision making of like, I can't just do what's best for me. I've got to remember there's a million uh, little boys and girls that look up to me and, and look at how I behave. And like, how how is that to be that figure in culture? Like, well, I mean, yeah, there have been times where I've wanted to post the middle finger emoji and then I delete it because I'm like, wait, <laughs> that could be bad. <laughs> That's when I like double think things. Yeah, I think for me now that I'm a mother and... Um, I, you know, my responsibility to my daughter is to teach her things and for her to look up to me and see me as a role model, but also 
for her to just learn all my different ways. And I think of that with my fans. You know, now I'm just like, they look up to me the way Birdie does. And I want to teach them the right ways. And the mistakes I've made, I want them to learn like, oh, please don't do those mistakes, you'll regret them. And um, I always think about that when I post. I kind of think of a mom. And I think of just like teaching. And, you know, we were lucky enough where we had a lot of great role models growing up. And it helped out so much. It helped define us as strong women. It helped with our confidence. And that's kind of what I want for, you know, all of our younger yeah. fans. And I think for Brie and I, it's not force. Like, it's not like, okay, this is our brand and we have to do it. We truly love our younger generation. And we love being their inspirations or their Wonder Women or their superheroes. It means a lot to us. And like Bree said, we had those role models growing up and they helped me make good decisions from the bad. I mean, I remember when JLo, like JLo was huge when I was in middle school. That's when she was like really coming out. And being like a Latin woman, like having a mustache in middle school and being like, mom, you can't bleach it. I have like tan skin. Like I look like a milk ad. And, but I remember when Latin Magazine came out, I remember JLo graced the cover and like she talked about curves and all this stuff. And for me, that gave me such confidence and I was in seventh grade and that changed me. And um, that's what I think, especially with social media and with cyberbullying, I just really, like my heart wants to be there for this younger generation. Like I wish I could go into every school of every kid that got picked on and put those bullies in headlocks and really protect those kids. Um, I just feel like that's like our purpose and we really have a heart, it's authentic and we really love doing it. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, J-Lo inspires me to this day. Br Br who's your J-Lo? <laughs> yeah, who's, yeah. who's my J-Lo? <laughs> who's your J-Lo? It could be J-Lo. It could be. <laughs> no, um, gosh, who is my J-Lo? I feel like. She's obsessed with Kate Hudson. I knew you were going to say that. Okay. It is like crazy. What do you mean? I'll like crazy? see you like scrolling like... our Instagram. I'm like, seriously. Of course. Seriously. I She's love She's like, Kate you don't Hudson. follow her. I'm like, you follow her? <laughs> Are you guys friends? <laughs> no, but I know everything about her. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it's funny because I think when I was younger... Well, you know who you love, who you always quote? Oh, who? Bill Gates' wife. Oh, Melinda Gates. Melinda Gates. She Actually, loves Melinda Gates. I do. Yeah, she Maria is, right? Shriver. I always... those oh, were, Maria Yeah, Shriver. those are like my favorite Instagrams to follow. But, um, yeah. Maria and Shriver just always... stuck up for me on Twitter, so I was really? like... Oh Actually, gosh. that was a big deal. We, like, that was. Deal. Yeah. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> I, uh, so J-Lo, uh, Kate Hudson, Maria Shriver, and Melinda Gates. Yeah, I mean, that's Melinda a cool group, right? That is a very you know? cool group. That is like I a think we all should go to dinner. Yeah, right? that, 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 is, that is a line of action figures <laughs> yeah. waiting to happen is what that is. Now I hope I age like the J-Lo. The new Avengers. Because. Exactly. There you so go. We all are. That is a good Avenger group. I like it. <laughs> uh, let's turn it over. I know we got a bunch of questions. We got microphones in the room. The first one, I'm trying to find it. I think it's right here. here. Hello, Hi. Nikki. Hello, Bray. Hi. Uh, my question for you today is... What advice do you ladies have for w young women such as myself who would like to pursue a professional wrestling career one day? Ooh, yes. How old are you? 20. Nice. So you can go to NXT. You are old enough. Um, you know, for Nicole and I, um, something that we always thought that was important is that it's kind of finding your niche, what you think would be great in wrestling, this character. And there's so many wrestling schools all over the country. Um, obviously, the top one is NXT, and every day they're taking resumes and videos. But if you look in your own community, it's crazy how many wrestling schools you'll find. And it's getting that training in. It's starting to figure out, like, okay, watching the product and seeing WWE and being like, you know what? They don't have this. And this is what they're missing out on. And um, But, yeah, it's just slowly getting your way to NXT. Yeah. And I wish something that someone told me when I first started out is, how can I connect with the audience? Like, what is it to have that crowd connection? Because, you know, in our business... Even if it's not a televised event, it's still a live event. And WWE is run by our fans, by the WWE universe. And you don't, the worst thing ever for a wrestler is when they're sitting there quiet. It's like, no, at least boo me, even if I'm a good guy, like, or <laughs> chant. Yeah. yeah. You want the reaction. And I think that's something to think about is how can I react to this crowd and how can I adapt? Because the audience at MSG is a lot different when you're in Chicago or when you're in London or, you know, China. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's so important as you create your character and being a character. Because, I mean, that's what I love about WWE and I think what everyone loves about WWE is getting lost in a character. So yeah. think well, of your own superhero. 
Let me ask you something about the, the character aspect of it, because I think it's definitely changed over the years. You know, when I was a kid and we would watch wrestling, you know, you only knew the character. You very rarely got to see the person on the other right. side. Would, would you say now you have to be prepared to be vulnerable as well and to show that other side? That's become a part of it. If you want to yes. break through and make that real connection right. with your fans, you also, in addition to your character, have to like let yourself sort of be out there too? Yeah, you totally do. And I think that's because of social media, because, you know, unfortunately like there's the thing in our business called kayfabe and it was very easy to do back in the day when there wasn't cell phones with cameras and you know live feeds and all this different stuff but now with social media I mean you can't hide someone's real who they are as a real person so we kind of have to break that fourth wall a little bit and you need to see that change it's just where we're at in the world does that person they get to see is that ultimately like another mini character or does it have to be you I mean I think now it's, if you can have, like, Fearless Nikki is truly who I am. Like, I was always, I always loved being a sexy tomboy. I know that's, like, ironic. But um, <laughs> I, that's, like, who I was. I was always that person. And so the day I didn't have to, like, dress like her, I was like, thank goodness. I wanted to be who I was. And um, so it made it very easy for when people did see me. They're like, oh, yeah, Fearless Nikki. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> this is me. So... Very cool. It's yeah. Got a few more. We're gonna go all the way over. Let's try you. Let's see if your mic's on. Go um, for it. Hello. Yeah. So, yes. um, um, so I have a question. Um, when you are not doing so well in a match, what keeps you motivated to keep going? Ooh. Knowing that yeah. you're gonna go back and see Vince McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> it's very motivating. Um, I think it's it's honestly the crowd. Um, there. Are you we wrestle like when especially when we are wrestling you're wrestling five nights a week you're gonna have nights that could be a little off you're gonna have confusers that happen and it's you just know it's gonna happen and so you know when you're wrestling for so long you just know to kind of how to get past it they're like okay this is going a little bad let's pick it up and go this way and i think that's the great thing too about like always working in front of a live crowd you know like okay i had this idea to go one way but the crowd's not feeling it. And just like that, you know how to turn and go the other way. Would you say that your ability to sort of improv in the ring and in that moment has sort of helped your ability to keep a conversation going but not be awkward on your reality show? Oh, <laughs> oh 100%. Sure. That's why oh we just gosh. will start cutting promos on each other. I'm yeah. Like, okay, we have nothing else to talk about. So yeah. you're going down tonight. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. No, yeah. Just cut a promo. Yeah, but it, oh. um, it totally helps. Yeah. Because we're living, we're wrestling in front of cameras, and then you just get used to living your life in front of a camera, and it's always live. So it's not like reality show, we don't go take, okay, let's redo that. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's kind of like wrestling, we can't do that either. We can't be in the middle of match, and be like, okay, guys, uh, we're gonna redo that yeah. move real quick. So it's, it's translated very well. Well, and we all use our little carny language. So the best is the crews will never know. We're just like, ooh, this is hitting like the heat. Like we need to get oh, yeah. into the comeback. The best is like, especially because we're such good friends with Natty. Like we've been good friends for 11 years. <laughs> and we'll see like poor, like let's say Lana fighting with someone and Natty will be like, can someone throw her a hope spot? We're like, yeah. And the crews are like, yeah. what are they talking <laughs> about? And I'm like, you don't yeah. understand. You were getting in the finish. Don't worry. These yeah. girls about to just, you know, fight. Oh, that's amazing. We got time for a couple more. Next one's going to come from, I let's try, let's go. You got a mic? Let's see. They're pointing at you. <laughs> okay, hi. Um, has being a woman wrestler ever made you guys or anyone else doubt your capabilities? Oh, that's a really good question. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think, you know, I think what it is is sometimes they have this perception of us that we aren't, I don't want to say intelligent people, but I think because we fight and... I mean, guys, people usually think they're in their underwear and, like, we're whatever. I think people just have this perception of wrestling that you're just, like, Ur, and there's, like, nothing up here. And, in fact, when you talk to so many of the wrestlers, I mean, you realize so many of them have degrees. They're very intelligent people. You would be blown away the conversations you can have. And so I think it's funny because even in the fashion industry, there's so many brands that are like, we want strong, empowering women to represent our brand. And then they'll say some of the female wrestlers and they go, oh, no, 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 we're not going to work with wrestlers. And it's like, but we're empowering strong women, but it's just the perception they have. And I truly think like with the women's evolution right now, we're really changing that of that perception. And I think the start was dropping the word divas because 
Can you imagine coming when we all started doing Total Divas and we come into this mainstream world? They're like, oh, divas are coming. They're like, divas? Like, yeah. wait, what? Yeah. Are they going to be high maintenance? They're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's what we just call female wrestlers. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I, you know, definitely I think over time people have an amazing perception of the women wrestlers. But, yeah. We've got time for, was that one more? We're going to do one more. And it is right here in the front. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. So as a fan of your show, um, you guys are open books. And in particular, Nikki, you've been very vocal about wanting to be a mom. And I was wondering, given that you guys are so close and seeing Brie go through pregnancy and now being a mom of a year, has that enhanced your feelings about it? And then on the flip side for Brie, 15 years from now, if Birdie's like, hey, mom, I want to be a wrestler. Yeah. Are you supportive of it? <laughs> You want to sure. The um, Birdie definitely gave me a lot of baby fever. I was like willing to sacrifice kids, and then this cute little girl came into the world, and then done. Like <laughs> how she would look at me, and I mean, there's just snuggle oh snuggle, and I just it was my first experience of unconditional love, and I was like, okay, I have to have this. Um, but then when I saw Brie go through labor and try to balance a career, it was the best form of birth control. And I was like, I don't know if I want this. I think I'm okay. You don't but want you, sleep? <laughs> I don't know how you do it. But then I was like, okay, well, if I save my money up for a night nurse and a nanny, I think I'll be okay. But I mean, but Birdie, it's just even when like looking at her this morning and how she was, I'm like, okay, I, it's so worth it. And I get it. So thank you, Birdie, for putting me in the situation I am right now. <laughs> But it'll be worth she it. Lit that fire. Yeah, um, you know, and it's crazy because this season of Total Bell is you're going to see Brian um, make a comeback back to the ring. You're going to see his match at WrestleMania. And it's really interesting because the reality cameras actually didn't realize that they were following kind of this story because it all of a sudden be Brian was gone at another doctor's appointment that he would fly himself to. Because literally the day that they said he could not perform in ring, he was like, no, I can't. Like... I'm going to find the answer yes, which I'm like, geez, you really are the yes man. <laughs> you want to take no as an answer. Nikki, Brie mode, we know yeah. how she got that name, and then you have the yes man. Um, and he literally just went to all these different doctors and kept proving that he could get back in that ring. And you see that, and, and it's incredible. It's very emotional, but um, it was funny because we didn't bring Birdie to WrestleMania. But what you'll see is um, there was a picture of Birdie watching Brian's match. And she actually was really loving it, like sitting there watching. And Brian got very emotional after his match over that. He just never in his life thought that his kids would ever be able to see him perform in the ring. And granted, Birdie wasn't really, like, you know, she doesn't really understand. But I told Brian, I'm like, you know, it's going to be crazy because one day Birdie will probably look at you and I and be like, I want to wrestle. Like, I want to go to WWE and do exactly what you did. And for me, as a woman in WWE, I think that would be a huge honor for my daughter to look at me and want to follow my footsteps. It's exactly why we do what we do at WWE. So little girls like that want to be us. But I'm just like, she might want to be, you know, Birdie Bella. No, she better be Birdie Bella. But a lot of people she might want to be Birdie, be Birdie Brian. Birdie Brian. <laughs> so as a girl... Don't you all agree? She should be Birdie Bella. And yeah. if you guys have a boy, he could come there and he could be whatever you name him, Brian. <laughs> okay? So, okay. Okay, okay. Ben. You talk to Brian about it. Brian and I, you guys have been in so many debates about this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the never going to end. The one thing is she looks like Brian, so she might have So to then she should for sure be a Bella. I mean, she already <laughs> looks like him, so. Maybe they'll call her Bella Brian. How about that? No, um, that's not okay with me. <laughs> so we, we do hope one day. I think it would be amazing. To be honest, she's already throwing kicks. And I'm like, well, those are really good. right now? Oh, Birdie the Smasher Danielson. She smashes Brian everything. and I are just like oh, yeah. the smashers out. Yeah, she's, it's unreal. Like she, some of the stuff she does, Brian's like, oh my gosh, she's going in for a triangle choke. I'm like, jeez. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of wrestling at our house. <laughs> That was all. Guys, thank you uh, so much for all of your questions. I'm getting a signal. We got to wrap it up. Yeah, we yeah, can applaud. Thank We're, you. It's thank applaud. You. Thank you. Before you go, um, 
Wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't remind everybody. Uh, Total Bell is uh, season three, uh, E Channel, this Sunday, May 20th. That's right. What time? Do we yes. know what time? 9 p.m. Yes. Eastern. So it's no one's bedtime. You can watch and then go to bed. It's yes. perfect. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you. I want to congratulate you, but I want to thank you not just uh, for, for coming on this show and hanging out with us again. We love having you here, but also continuing to just be awesome people and inspire everybody and all the hard work you put in out there and being vulnerable and letting us uh, follow you and be a part of the story. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on this. Thank Make some you. noise for Nikki and Brie Bell, everybody. Guys. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, guys.